Hello and welcome to Teen Talk. I am your host, Lara Thomas, and I'd like to introduce you to our guest this evening. Um, I have Amy Roth to the left, who is our ASB social chair, Lisa Giancola, our photo, ed photo editor of the Oak Leaf, and his ASB historian, and Vicki Cerruti, a very active member of our broadcasting club. Now, with Christmas and the holiday season right around the corner, many exciting activities are planned for the Live Oak High School campus. That's right, Lara. The fall sports just have just wrapped up, and now we're heading into the winter sports season, which includes boys and girls basketball, wrestling, and soccer. Right? And soccer. That's right. And it's also the second half of the cheerleading season. Yeah, we just completed our, our winter sports rally, and that was very exciting. It was very exciting, and it was it was also exciting because Hollister came out and for the first time in their ASD and saw us, and, and they told us after what good spirit we have. That was nice to hear. And um, I also, with the beginning of the winter sports season, um, the fall season just ended. And myself playing um, field hockey, we had a wonderful season. We were co-MBL champions. And also, um, we went to the second round of CCS, where we lost to St. Francis. And I know our Live Oak football team had a wonderful season, too. They um, went to the first round of CCS, where they lost to Oak Grove. But Oak Grove's in the final round of CCS, so it wasn't a bad team to lose to. And um, Lisa, how did tennis do? Tennis, we had a lot of uh, new members to our team. But overall, we had really good spirit and really good hopes. Um, we didn't finish off winning too well, but we had a good season and worked really hard as a team. I really good hopes for next year. Good. It's wonderful to hear. And I know also our um, boys and girls water polo teams did excellent. Now, moving on um, from the sports section to um, drama. Lisa, would you like to tell us about The Wall, a new play that's happening? Yeah, it's about, um, takes place during the Holocaust, and it's um, a very sad play, very dramatic, and it's performing this Friday and uh, also next week, and I think... Do you know the dates on that? Yeah. I believe it's November 30th, um, December 1st is 2nd, and December 7th and 8th of next week. Oh, that's right, and it's not going to be on the 9th because that's our winter ball. That's right, we have our winter ball coming up next weekend. Um, I believe the theme this year is Snowed In. Yes, it is. We wrote it on that in our in ASB. It, the theme Snowed In, and our colors are going to be white and blue. Oh. So if this comes out before, then you can all coordinate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, get your dresses and tux to match, right? Because it is a formal affair. That's right. It's going to be in our Live Oak gym. Yes, and I know all of us in ASB spend um, hours before Oh, of course, the night decorating. before the eve of the Christmas dance, yes. and decorating and making it look so we can have that look wonderful for that Snowden theme, right? Yep. Right. Yes, and moving on to another ASB um, event. It's our first year of this. It's the Giving Tree. And the Giving Tree um, was started in 1990 by um, people of the Hewlett Packard Company. And the point of the Giving Tree is to give underprivileged children of the Bay Area a chance to get their Christmas wishes fulfilled. And to do this, um, what you do is, well, we go out and we um, find out children's wishes and then we, put, we place their wishes on a tree with their name, their age, their sex, and um, what their wish is. And um, you can then go get the wish and go get the gift, and then you can wrap it up and bring it back, and then we'll, we'll get the gift to the child. And Live Oak High School will be doing this. Um, it's in our, the tree is in our ASB office. And um, if you would like to do it, you can go to 1505 East Main Avenue, which is Live Oak High School, and go into the ASB office there and just take a wish. You can take as many wishes as you want. We have 100 right now. If you'd like to, um, or if we sell out of those, we can always get more. And just wrap the gift and bring it back by December 15th. The wishes are actually quite simple. I was reading them and, you know, a little boy asked for a toothbrush. And it's really sad what they wish for, you know, stuffed animal. And yeah, their wishes aren't, you they're know. So, they're so simple. And there's even wishes pants. for Sweat color crayons and board games, things like that. Yeah, school supplies or, um, I mean, they're so easy. And there's even wishes in there for um, older people, like elders, like, uh, there's a grandpa that wants a blanket. That's all he wants for Christmas. So, if you guys can help out and set. try to fulfill as many wishes in, as we can this season. Because we've decided as ASB we want to help our community more. That always helps us. And that's what we're trying to do and help all those underprivileged people. And they are local underprivileged They are local. They're people. all from the Bay Area. They're from four counties in the Bay Area. So, if we can get out there and help them again, the Christmas spirit. All right. And um, also another activity happening during the holiday season within the Live Oak campus is the new portables that are coming in and the new renovation that's taking place at Live Oak High School. 
And Lisa, you wrote an article about this, didn't you? Yeah, in the, in the Oak Leaf. Um, well, we're starting off the week before Christmas vacation. The students will be um, removing all their belongings from their lockers. And during vacation, the move will take place. And um, all the buildings from the 100 buildings, 300, 400, 900 buildings, there's four buildings, and we will be moving them to the, a new not a new campus, but where the softball fields were once situated. And there will be um, 40 classrooms there. And so it's going to be a tough time, but a lot of, there's a lot of complaints within students that we aren't going to have enough time in our yeah. classroom period. But um, actually, it only takes about three minutes from the quad, which will be the farthest point, to the portables. So it's really not going to be hard if people just get to class and don't socialize. And so we're going to all try to be cooperate and work well together to make this move as easy as possible. And it's going to continue within the next two to three years. So. Yes, it's going to be a long renovation. And how do, you, how do you guys feel about it? Are you excited or kind of upset? I mean, because I know us, us three are all seniors, and how do you feel like yeah, having your last year? Most of my classes are going to be moved to the portables um, because there's five buildings that are being redone, and most of my classes are in those five. Into a portable city as we know it now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I was wondering, um, Lisa, do you know what the locker situation is going to be since most of the students are moving their things out of their current lockers? Well, the, for the buildings that are going to be moved, those lockers that are located off those buildings will also be moved and they will be located right behind the girls' locker room. So there will be lockers there. Good. And then also another concern is the rain, how it's, you know, rainy season now. They're, they are paving that area, so it won't be muddy. And we can't really complain about the overhang since you don't, they don't really work they anymore. Don't work. Well now. No. <laughs> so, you know, it's going to be a tough time, but, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of, you know, and do you guys feel that, um, like learning the portables is a harder thing to do and that it's going to affect your education? Actually, they are larger. Are I they? I don't believe so. I've heard that they're higher quality and much nicer because our buildings are so old that the renovations are so torn down as it so is. Compacted in our classrooms, they're, they're so small and there's not much room for all of us. But they are really nice and we're keeping a few of them and we're renting the rest. So. Right. I think just the fact that the portables have windows, it's just, it gives much more open feeling. Light, there, huh? Right? You don't feel so compacted in the buildings that we're in right now. Yeah. So I think it's better. And also, the, um, we can control our own air. Usually, we have to make phone calls to the district office, and they right. say, no, the temperature is 72 degrees. And like, we're like, no, it's, it's freezing. freezing. We're having to <laughs> bring in our own heaters. Yeah, our system doesn't work very well now. So I think it will be really good that you know, we can control our own heat. Because of the move to the portables, do you know if the teacher's vacation is going to be cut short for them moving all their things? I don't, you know, I don't think so. Maybe they'd have to spend a lot more time than expected for all those teachers who will have be having to move. But it shouldn't take too long. I think what's hard about it is that they're going to have to move all their belongings to the portables, and once their building spanners move everything back, back again, and that's you know real difficult. But it'll, it'll be worth it. You know, it's going to. What's another thing is um, all the students at Live Oak now, we will all graduate before the renovations will be complete. So it's going to be a little disappointing that we have to go through all this, but we won't get to see and experience, you know, the new high school. Yeah, for a while, though, we were worried that we'd have to have our graduation at Gilroy, and now we're, we've been informed that <laughs> it will, it be, will at be at Live Oak. Yes, it will be. That's exciting, too. And we still have all our athletic facilities except for um, the softball field, because since the portables are on the softball, softball field, they'll be... Um, the softball players will be moved to Community Park, and that's where they're going to be playing now and practicing. There also is a place for them to keep their equipment, and there's going to be some transportation. So, yes, yeah, so that's very nice, because all the sports are still facilitated. And um, is there anything else you guys would like to say about that, about the, um, the big move coming December? I think that basically covers all of my concerns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we hope you um, look forward and have a full to the holiday season, and... And um, I know we're excited to see the new changes happen within Live Oak High School, and I hope you come out and see them. Thanks. Can I get a feet shot? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Pamela Kellogg, and I'm going to be hosting the International Christmas section. With me today is Jackie, and we have two people, from, one's from Germany and one's from Ghana, and they're going to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Edith Fahinyako. I'm John Dams and I'm from Germany. So John, what have you noticed is different in the US than Germany when it comes to be Christmas time? It's just like they're putting more lights on the house, but most of the things are really similar. 
do you guys have do you guys put lights on your house and yeah, but not decorate? That, yeah, but not that colorful. It's just most just white light and not that red, blue, and all that stuff. Oh, I see. What about in Ghana? What do they do in Ghana? Um, well, we don't put a lot of em emphasis on um, the lights and other stuff, but some people try to do it, and others just don't bother with it. It's, it's just not too too much of a big deal. Do you guys have Christmas trees, or do you do something different? Um, yeah, just like I said, with the lights and the Christmas trees, we don't put too much emphasis on the lights and the Christmas trees. I think it's just like some people have different, you know, different religions that they celebrate and festives that they celebrate and Christmas is just for actually Christians who like worship God and other stuff and want to celebrate the birth, birth of Christ and stuff so yeah. Oh I see. Do you guys think that the holidays in the U.S. are more commercialized over here? Mm, well I think like most Germans just travel around like there's more traveling like to foreign countries than in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also think that um, a lot of people in the States actually move to other places for Christmas time to visit other people and stuff, but from where I come from, not I don't know about a lot of people who actually travel out of the country for Chris just for Christmas time. So. Oh, I see. So now that you're in the United States, have you brought any of those customs or traditions with you, or do you pretty much stay true to the American Christmas while you're here? Actually, I just tried to find out like the American way of Christmas, mm -hmm. but I brought some German Christmas candy with me, so I just like the food from Germany. So, that say that one more time. Again? No, 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 go ahead. From where? Actually, no, I think not. most of them are eaten. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Actually, I tried to find out what the American way of Christmas is. But anyway, I bought some German Christmas candy that my host family can experience, like what Germany Christmas is. Well, um, here, uh, because I live with my parents here, and um, we actually don't carry, like, you know, carry other religions here, but we, during Christmas time or during Thanksgiving and stuff, we cook our own, like, traditional foods and have it here. What kind of food is that? Um, we have food, food that's made out of um, um, potato butts and um, starch, cornstarch and other stuff, and we, we can make soups, gravy... Other things that sort of thing. Yeah. That's cool. So how old are, were you guys when you first started learning English? Because both of you seem so fluent mm -hmm. and we don't even start foreign language till freshman year. And let me think. Uh, I think I was around ten. Like in Germany we have to learn English from fifth grade on. So nearly everyone can speak English fluently. But um, in Africa, from where I come from, actually, you're um, when you're born and you like get into school, elementary school, um, in schools English are taught like every every time, and the teachers use English as a form of language in the classrooms to teach um, the students. So a lot of people from where I come from, the country I come from, Ghana, really understand English, and pe other people here in the states think that not you know not everybody in Af Africa understands English and other stuff. But I I I think that a lot of people in my country could really speak English and are a little bit not too much American but yeah the English is really good. Wow. In, in Europe like the language is just basic education. Like there are so many countries so we also have to learn like French or Latin so it's just like a big house of different countries. So if you're going to travel you're learning like English definitely and maybe French or Spanish. Yeah and in Africa we we, d we learn um French with English too, but we don't learn Germany, Latin, Spanish, and that's the only language that we actually learn. After. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Do you guys ever speak in English to each other, like your friends? Or um, 
sometimes, but I have my own language that I speak so much of the time. I speak with my friends in my own language, you know, like, yeah. Well, normally not, it's just like, maybe if there's some special word from movies, mm -hmm. sometimes we just adapt it, but, well, sometimes we overtake, like, English words and bring them into our own language, but it's just, it's not really talking in English, it's just yeah. getting some new words. To mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Now, as far as you've noticed with the Christmas season so far, um, the day after Thanksgiving is always the biggest shopping day of the year. Do you guys have anything like that, or is that just an American thing? I think in the, it's an American thing. <laughs> in Germany, is there some big shopping craze? You know, actually, before Christmas, there's just a lot of trouble, like in shopping centers, like all oh, people are going there to get the Christmas presents, but it's not like one day after Thanksgiving. It's just like all of the time, like the last four Saturdays before Christmas, the shops are longer open and then most people go to get the presents. I see. So what kind of celebrations do you guys have for the new year? Well, most people like have parties and stuff to, you know, celebrate the new year. And um, a lot of Christians actually go to church, you know, to go to check to worship God and stuff for the new year and then on that day on um, the 1st of January they go to church and then thank God for a new year and other things but some people have parties you know huge parties to celebrate the new year wow in Germany it's like that's a big party like at least on the street where you're living like all people come together have some drinks and at midnight there's a big firework like in Germany you're allowed to do your own firework so even small kids are doing some like small rockets and <laughs> that stuff. Wow. Like the whole night is a big party. And you if you are older like from sixteen on, some go to clubs for dancing and having a really big official party. Wow, so it's pretty similar I guess then yeah. to the US with all the parties and everything like that. Wow. So is there anything in particular you've noticed about America that you find maybe humorous or just just completely different from what you're used to? Well, during the Christmas time it's really cold here and there it's not too cold. It's, well, from Africa it's not too cold. It's actually pretty warm during the Christmas time so you can go to the beach, have parties and have fun. Yeah, but here I guess it's pretty cold. Well, I would say like that Americans are more stricter there are more rules than in Germany. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just... I think it's a different attitude to things. Mm -hmm. I see. Hey, How you doing? I'm fine. Dad. How you been doing in school, the whole transition and everything? Well, it's, it's pretty easy in America. Like, it's just more time-consuming school, but... Like, for the quarter, I got 3.83. Yeah. And it's just like you have to work more, it's not harder, but it's just more time. A lot more workload. Yeah, like in Germany, school starts at 8 and it's over at 1.20. So well, you're done okay. lately with some work at 4, so there's a lot of time you can go out with friends or whatever. Because another thing I heard is that um, the German school time schedule is a lot different mm. from ours in America. That's right, like we have just we have also six period, but they are only 45 minutes long, and they vary from day to day. So it's just like you have three periods a week English, and like the basic subjects you have three periods a week, and like some different subjects like history and whatever bio, just two periods a week. So you have 12 different subjects a semester. Well, yeah, in Africa we take um, 12, 12 subjects, like for the whole year you take 12 subjects and it's kind of like juggled up for the week so you have maybe math, English, and math, English, science, and other um, subjects, you know, for the day and then tomorrow you have maybe PE first, you know, it's kind of juggled up. No. But it's, it's not like the States where you have math, English every day, you know, mm -hmm. math, English every day. Do you day. like that better or does it really not make a difference? Well, I, I don't really know, but I don't think it makes such a big deal. It's not such a big deal for me because I guess it's kind of like the same everywhere. 
Yeah, that's right. Now, John, you're currently a senior at Live Oak, yeah. correct? Now, when you go back to Germany, how much more schooling do you have before you complete I high have school? To go two more years. Like actually, I would right now I would be junior at Live Oak, but they said that the German system is so much further that I should be a senior. So, in Germany, school is 13 years. Then you can go to college. But how long do you actually spend in college? Depending on what you're studying, like from four years to 12. Like if you want to be a professor for really high math or whatever, you have to go a long time. Is the college whole system in Germany a lot like the one in, like the ones that we have here, or is it more demanding, or is it a different type of education? I think the American is tougher than the German college. Like actually, Germany, I would say it's, it's just the school is just a little bit ahead, but the American system is catching up in college. So what about in Ghana? Well, in Ghana, it's it's actually you 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 go you kind of like go from um, elementary school to ninth grade, and then you take a a major you know like an exam, and then when you pass that you go to high school, and then when you pass from high school you, you like apply to colleges just like here you know mm -hmm. apply and then get into colleges and stuff, and it actually depends on the um, subjects you really want to take you know like be a doctor you have to take seven years of school. Yeah, so it's kind of like the whole. In wow. your native countries, do you guys, while in high school, do you guys work part time jobs as we do in America? Um, y some people choose to do that, but yeah. Is you it as prevalent as it is here? Um, not really. No. Not really. Now, how does driving work? Because everybody. In America, when they turn 16, they're excited to get their license, get a car, and have that whole new sense of freedom and independence. Yes. So, do you guys have the same thing, or are your driving mm. years requirements different? Well, we can make the driver license with 18, so we have to wait until we are 18, then we can't do it. Wow. And actually, it's really more expensive. It's around maybe $1,000. So, like, if you're going to America, you really want to do your own driver license mm -hmm. right here then you can drive in Germany and just spend little money for the test again Wow! but the driver license are so expensive that that people just don't even want to bother because it's too much money yeah and I think Europe is more like Africa because until you're 18 you know like you get to drive and other things but it's not that um, expensive to get a driver's license oh okay yeah, yeah, yeah. but like in Germany the public transportation system is so much better like you can go to Cologne by train from my town in 20 minutes and there are trains running every 30 minutes until 2 a.m. and there are so many buses you can catch so it's not really bad if you cannot drive yeah. so, <sighs> so does that mean that the majority of adults use public transportation as well or by that time does everybody have a driver's license or how does that work? Like Everyone is going to do the driver license, but many adults are using the public transportation system. It's just if they're going out and doing something, then you cannot drive. And also, the commute to the big cities is even as bad as like to San Jose, and so they prefer to go by train because it's faster wow. and cheaper. Yeah. So you've just been here for this school year so far, right, John? Right. And Edith, when did you move? Um, I moved here last year before Christmas. Wow. I remember. So, how has your Live Oak experience been? What do you think of it? Well, I think Live Oak is um, pretty cool and um, it really like, opens up your mind a little bit to high school and how it's going to be like when you get to college and that stuff. So, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, what do you think? It's really nice, but it's different. Like, I'm really worried about like the long school time. Just like it's really Does it drag on and on and yeah, on? Yeah, it's like a really <laughs> long day. I'm used just to a <laughs> few hours of school, and here it's like to 3 a.m., uh, p.m., yeah. <laughs> and then doing homework, and it's like a long day. Yeah. Did you feel like you fit in when you first came to the school, or did you feel like out of touch because of something profound ab different about the school? Well, actually, I think school is similar all over the world. <laughs> it's just the change, like from 
going, leaving your friends in Germany and just finding new people. Did you feel welcome to the school or did you feel like shunned for any reason? I felt welcome, yeah. yeah. What about you? Oh yeah, I felt welcome too because um, a lot of people will, I realize that a lot of people in Nyberg are actually pretty friendly, you know, like get to know other people from other country and I really like that yeah that really makes you welcome to the place and it's kind of like a new place to me because I just moved here and it was a little bit hard to adjust but yeah I feel okay yeah that's now. right like that Americans like all over are more friendly than other nations people just they were more friendly to you they really want get to know you and that's pretty good wow so have the both of you just been to California, or have you been to any other states yet? Uh, no, I've just been in California and yeah, here in Morgan Hill. Really? Where in California have you guys have you guys gone sightseeing or traveling anywhere? Well, I've been to Yosemite and I really liked it there, and um, I've been to San Francisco City itself, you know, like mm -hmm. to see the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, and that was really fun. Wow. So what well, have you done? I spent a weekend in Oregon for the Oktoberfest uh. in a small German town like close to Portland and last year I was in California and then we did all the tourist stuff like going to Yosemite and Monterey and Santa Cruz. Wow. After having seen a lot of the parts of this state or various parts of the country, do you think that Either you guys would choose to live here over your native country if you had that choice? I would definitely choose California. Yeah. Like I really like the lifestyle and that possibility to go surfing and adjust. The people are more friendly and the weather is really better than in Germany. Do you think it's more geared for kids our age or just all around a better place to be in? I think it's for all age better. Well, I think that well, probably I'd like to go back to Africa, I don't know, because it's uh, much warmer there during Christmas, and it, it doesn't get that much cold like it is here during Christmas time, winter stuff now. It's always so warm and pretty and stuff, but I think I'd like to be here for a while, yeah, get to know other people. Wow. Do you miss your home country at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot. I miss the food from Germany. Yeah. Like, and it's really the thing I'm missing, and also friends. Yeah. Um, do you have do you have any kinds of food that you can buy from here that are from Germany? Well, actually, you can buy it. Like, let's pretend that's jam, but <gasps> it tastes different. Oh, okay. It's really oh. Good. But that's an African shop I know here in there in San Jose. So yeah. What's it called? Um, I think it's the Fiji Market. I don't really know the where it is at, but it has African goods from my country and other countries in Africa, so yeah, you can get African things from there. Oh wow. Good. Yeah. Very cool. So, since you guys have been to some parts of California, is there any other states that you guys would like to travel to? Um, I don't know. I think I'd like to travel to Washington, D.C., just to see the White House, mm -hmm. I guess. That's something I really want to do. Wow. And, um, yeah, that's it, I guess. Yeah, maybe Florida or New York. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why those states over a state like Kansas or Kentucky? <laughs> well, actually, we have that, that impression that Kansas yeah. and that just wheat fields. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was your initial impression coming into the states before you got here about what you were going to see before you saw it? I don't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, yeah. Your brother was a foreign exchange student a couple years ago, yeah. right? Right. Now, when he told you lots of stuff about the United States, was what he told you pretty much how it was like, or did you find things to be different? Well, actually, he told me exactly the same what I found out. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really, like, fun being here. And it's yeah. also, like, in school, it's more, more work. Well, it was great to have you here. It's so nice to have so much diversity at Live Oak. And so this is going to conclude um, our international Christmas segment. And I thank you very much for joining us. Okay. Yeah. okay. 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 okay.
holidays are here and you've already uh, given your holiday Christmas program. Um, it's just been very, very nice to have you all here this evening. And John, what do you think about uh, your first time on American television? Or is this not your first time? It's not my first time, but I have no answer to the question. No answer to that question. Well, we want to thank everybody here at Channel 19 at Morgan Hills Public Access Station because you guys have been wonderful. You've been very patient, and I know not everything is all the time perfect with sound and lighting and so forth, but I know you're going to make us all look good, and we really appreciate your, your hard work and effort, and we want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. So, uh, Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas. Come on, you guys. Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. And uh, can you say something in German? Yeah. Um, frohe Weihnachten allen und ein gutes neues Jahr. And, Edith, go ahead. Afrikia Paul.